We can do it a slightly different way. All right. See this? Look. I got to make sure I can see it. It's really a lot of trouble to couple of these apart if you haven't done it. This is what the torque converter in the front of it looks like. Inside there is this. This is the impeller. Catches the fluid, throws it against the turbine. The turbine is planted into the turbine shaft. The turbine shaft turns the inside of the transmission. The stator redirects the fluid, gives you torque multiplication. If you do a stall speed test and the stall speed is low and your engine's not underpowered for some reason, that typically means that this one-way clutch is not working in here, and I've seen that before. And when you run into that, if your stall speed's low and you know your engine's not under power, it's skipping or exhaust choke down or whatever, you're going to have to put a torque converter on. That's all there's to it. And so basically, put all that back down in there. That goes, we can get it to spline in. There we go. We got that spline in. We set that on top of there. And there's our torque converter right there. All on the car, all of this is in one piece, but we cut it apart so we can see. That was quick. This splines into the pump. There is actually locks in the pump. Sometimes they're too flat, sometimes we have notches. Now, when you're putting a torque converter in, it's got to go clunk, clunk, clunk. Got to go past the stator support, the turbine shaft, and go into the pump. What? All right, there's got to click three times. All right, now we're coming back around here, and we're pointing it back at me. Got the camera pointed back at me. Okay, and this is a great view I've got right here on myself. <laughs> All right, now then, uh, the combination of rotary flow and vortex flow are what makes the torque converter work. Give us some gas, it's going to start turning the turbine. Turbine's going to turn the turbine shaft. And think about it, you know, you got this torque converter kind of big so it can do its work, right? Uh, if a stator one-way clutch problem is suspected, stall test or a bench test can be run. A bench test is when you find something to go down in there and engage those splines on that stator, I mean, on the inside of the stator. And around. you can tell, yeah, the one over there, I could turn it with my fingers one way but not the other, and I knew the stator clutch was okay. It's not hard to do. That's why I said in that worksheet, find a common sense way of checking to see if the uh, stator one-way clutch is good. And it's, you know, it's, it's made like this sprag, but I mean, you know, what else has a stator, what else has a one-way clutch on it that you use every single day, even if you've got a manual transmission in your car? What starter drive. The starter drive's got a one-way clutch in it. Oh, yeah, the starter drive. <laughs> you know, it starts the car, that little pinion gear that spins oh, yeah. the flywheel. And uh, whenever it, 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 actually, if the engine starts up and the starter's still engaged, then you hear that gear just raising cane. But let's go, this got a one-way clutch. The one-way clutch is holding when you're starting the car. And when the big, the wide field starts picking up speed, it's going to, you know, operate that, that one-way clutch is going to spin freely. Um, if you, how many of you have heard of a starter, when you go spin it over, you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it won't start the darn car. That one-way clutch is bad. That's what it is. I mean, it needs a starter drive. It's all it needs. I can rebuild this car. Yeah. All right. So, all right, if the, the Simpson gear set is the most common type of planetary gear set, true. is that true or is that false? It's true, true. That is true. Uh, lock up chuggle refers to, this is a General Motors term, nobody has I know of except General Motors uses the word chuggle. But lock up chuggle refers to a vibration that occurs during the apply or release of the lock up clutch or after the lock up occurs. That's, <clears throat> That's a false. What did you come up with on that, uh, Lawrence? After the lockup occurs. After the lockup occurs? Yeah, not, uh, let's see. Why is that statement false? Is what I'm asking. You found it in your book, didn't you? Yeah, I found it in the book, but I, I ain't, I ain't the page number on that one. Yeah. But I underlined after the lockup occurs, so. Yeah. That's probably when it, yeah. you know, you hear. I tell you what's going on with a lot of these torque converter clutches nowadays. They're, uh, you know, we always think of the torque converter clutches either locked or unlocked. I talked about this a little bit the other day, but you've got these situations where your torque converter is only partially locked up. Back in 1989, when we just got the uh, uh, Jeep yeah, Eagle franchise, cool. back whenever the uh, Jeep, you know, Jeep was uh, Jeep and I mean, Jeep and Eagle, basically. You remember Eagle Vision? You see another car, the Eagle Talon. This was different. And uh, we had this Eagle Summit, the Eagle Summit that came in there that we were working on. So we were an Eagle dealer, the place where I was working, and uh, this thing. Uh, when you would drive it, you could feel it surging. Then it was a brand new car. And uh, so I got in there and got to look at it. Usually whenever you got a surge, you got some EGR issue going on or something like that. You know, something going on with the fuel inje injection or the whatever. So I cleaned the fuel injectors on it. I had to set up some little adapters, hook up our machine, clean the fuel injectors on it. And the thing quit surging. You know, and a lot of times you could, you could actually see it in the tachometer, but you could feel it too. First they start seeing it in the tachometer, then they start feeling it. And so when I cleaned the injectors, it seemed like it went away. And uh, so it came back a couple of days later. I started doing it again. I said, what's up with that? 
And so I, I fiddled with the fuel system for a while, and finally uh, we had called the people at Chrysler about it. This guy named Dave Farley from uh, New Orleans called up there, and he says, uh, drain the uh, transmission fluid out of that thing and put more power plus uh, in it. And so in those days, that's what they call the fluid they were using. They had the friction modifiers in it. And I had noticed that when I put a dwell meter on the wire going to the torque converter clutch, I would get various dwell readings, which would mean it's not sending a straight hard signal all the time to the converter. It was, you know, it would go up to various different uh, amounts of lockup. And it was a controlled slip until it went to 100% and then it was lock solid. And uh, it, all of the cars started doing that right after that in the early 90s. You know, a lot of cars were doing that. It wasn't just a straight lockup converter. It would be a modulated slip. Well, on a modulated slip converter, whether it's a Crown Victoria or you know that Eagle or any other kind of car, uh, when the friction modifiers begin to break down in the fluid, you begin to get a surge. Well, whenever they built that transmission, they didn't put any friction modifiers in the fluid. And of course, to start with, me and the shop foreman, when they said change the transmission fluid, we were laughing about it. But we changed the transmission fluid, put Mopar Plus in there, which had a friction modifier, and it runs smooth as silk. Took care of the whole problem. And I was, I was just about sworn it was a fuel problem. All right, so that's what the thing about that. So after that, I drove another car and they gave it to me for a surge about a year later. And it was a legal talent and it felt the same way that Summit did. And so I said, This thing drives like it's got the wrong transmission fluid in it. So I went and pulled the file where it had been worked on previously at our dealership and our transmission mechanic had put the wrong fluid in it. Now, see, I could have worked on the fuel injection part of it all day long and I fixed that. You see what I'm saying? How, and how important, important it is to have a big picture toast put in. All right, so I had this Ford Taurus that I was driving. And I was feeling what felt like an EGR surge. And I actually had my test equipment on it. When I was looking at the graph, I could tell that the torque converter kicked in and went through its various percentages of control slip before it got in the lockup. That's when I was feeling all that stuff. And so I just poured a little bit of friction modifier like you'd put in a limited slip differential in the transmission. It was just smooth as silk. <laughs> Of course, I told somebody to Ford about that. Oh, don't do that. And then after a while, they started putting that same stuff in their transmission. Because it smells just like it. I mean, it may be slightly different, you know, but it scared the crew. It scared the crud out of them when I did it. But it always fixed them. Every time I did, never saw a total problem. Uh, here's another thing. How many of you have ever been riding in a Crown Victoria and you felt, you know these little speed breaker bumps? I'm not talking about like speed bumps, but a little bunch of strips of asphalt leading up to a stop sign? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you feel the torque converter doing that hogwash when you're not running over any bumps, then it needs a transmission service. That ain't complicated. You just do a transmission. You know, do a full fluid exchange is best. You know, we have a machine to do that out here with it. You know, replaces every bit of the fluid, all of it, the torque converter, and everything. You got nice clean fluid throughout. And we follow up and change the filter and clean the pan and put five more new ports in. And we, man, you got to jam up fluid. But anyway, if you feel a speed breaker, like on a Crown Vicky or something, you know, that whenever it's trying to do that limited slip, torque converter business, it'll chatter that clutch in there because the friction modifiers are in place. How many of you have ever had in a, driven a, a vehicle, a pickup, pickup truck or any kind of vehicle, had a limited slip rear end and had those clutches in there, and you're going around a corner and one tire is rolling faster than the other because you're going around a corner and you're feeling whoop, 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 whoop. And I'm not talking about spinning the tires, I'm talking about you just feel something weird. It's because they fumble the ball and didn't put friction modifier well, in the rear end. Well, it's causing those clutches in the rear end to slip, and you can feel it. They're chattering. And that's, that's one of the things I was talking about. Now, um, something else that Ford used to do on some of their pickup trucks that they'd have us pre delivering, they had, you know, they would send, deliberately send a vehicle to the dealership with no oil in the differential. Why? Because when the people were doing pre delivery inspections, they're supposed to check that. If they don't check it, and these people, got, they know which one they didn't put oil in, if it comes back with a warranty claim that the rear end burned up, Guess who pays for it? The dealership's got to pay for it. Well, I'm guessing they had to tool it in. They bring it to the shop, they had to tool it in, right? Bring yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, but now the one that they brought on the, they brought it on the uh, convoy, you know, that they carried all the cars. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it comes off, and it ain't going to cause no problem coming into the mm -hmm. shop. Right. But if somebody says, well, you know, he's been checking, you know, 10 or 12 trucks that day, and all of them's got a final, I'm fool checking that differential because they got to screw that plug out there and all that, so he just don't check it, and then it burns the right. dumb thing up. And see the next thing you know, you know, you've got issues. That's easy hey. if you got a little. Hey, I've heard of a rear end before. Well, that's a couple of thousand Ooh, dollars. Yeah, but what anyway. It what it do? It's, it's an awesome um, smoke everywhere. All right, let's go here. The stator one way clutch. Oh, the stator one way clutch can fail only if the clutch is constantly locked. Five was false, by the way. Six is also false. The stator one way clutch can either spin freely either way or it can fail if it's constantly locked. 
free with it, right? Yeah. If well, it's will be free level. Typically, be freely freewheeling when it fails. It won't usually fail either way. Yeah. Most planetary gear checks are simple visual inspections for damage and wear. True, true. That's true. Planetary gear sets the heart of the automatic transmission. And some transmissions, like the RE four hundred one Nissan transmissions, you, the people that were real sticklers for that would say, well, they like to burn up the planetary gear sets because they're not getting enough wall. So you're supposed to drill a hole a little bigger in the spacer plate in one particular spot. That's there's a hole there, but you need more oil going through it. You drill it out a little bigger, and you got more oil going to the uh, planetary, and it doesn't burn it up. And so that's one of the things there. Is that a recall? Uh, it was just a TSB fix. The Ravino gear set operation is the same as for the Simpson set. True. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's pretty much true. Uh, the primary <laughs> cooler for the fluids in the transmission is located besides the transmission. Inside, uh, Come on, radiator. it ain't beside the transmission. What are you talking about? Oh, no, no, no. It goes to the radiator. Or to a cooler that's in front of the radiator. Remember what I told you before? You got a turbine shaft that has wiped out the splines on the torque converter, and you're having to replace, you know, it's got metal and stuff all in the transmission, and it's just, you know, if you're cleaning the valve body and taking care of that torque converter problem and all that, you, you better replace the radiator or put an external cooler on it because there's going to be a lot of that crap in the radiator. It's going to go right back into the pan, get right back in the valve body and mess you up again. Yeah. And so, and this is one of those no move things. You're trying to drive the car off, it won't move in any gear. And you go in there looking around, all your pressures look good and everything. Well, when you pull the torque and burn it around, you look down in there, the splines are wiped out. And that happens sometimes. You know, you, I mean, those, those, where that gear goes in there, there's a lot of pressure there and those splines can get wiped out on that thing. And it happens sometimes. It's a good idea too. If you got the idea that maybe what's going on, to go ahead and just stick your uh, input shaft down in there. If you got the transmission door apart, and let it spline into those splines and see what it feels like. And you'll sometimes you'll feel it going, dit, 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 you know, break it loose in there. And, but usually, if you look with, if you pour the oil out of the converter and you look with a flashlight, you can usually see if they're wiped out or not. Yeah, but if they are, I'm telling you, you better get that, get a radiator replacement so you get rid of that metal, uh, or put an external cooler on it and bypass one in the radiator. The primary cooler for the fluids in the transmission is beside the transmission. That's obviously false. The common type, most common type of in-vehicle test is the converter leak test. False. That's false. Now the converter can leak. The converter can leak, particularly if you had a flywheel that cracked uh, and flexed a lot. Uh, you, that little button on the front of the converter that goes into the that little button about this big round, it goes into the back of the flywheel. If there's been a lot of flexing going on there because the, the flex plate is cracked and it's not holding things still, it can leak fluid from around the button on that uh, torque converter. I've seen that before. There's one guy put a rear, I mean, a front, a lot of transmission fluid coming out of the torque converter area. So he pulls the uh, uh, transmission out, replaces the front pump seal, puts it back in, it's leaking just like it was. They changed the darn thing. And then it turns out it was leaking from that nose. If it's leaking from that nose, you better be looking at the flywheel. Because this light will be cracked, but usually it'll make noise when it's cracked, you know. Uh, we had to put a flywheel in a 2000 Chevrolet pickup truck that uh, over here, and uh, David Buck did the job. But the, uh, and he did a good job of it. One thing he did wrong, and it was an easy mistake to make, if you're pulling the transmission out on some of them trucks and you're pulling these torsion bars, right? Those torsion bars, you better mark those suckers and put them back in there the same way they were. That's in long bars that take the place of the springs on a four-wheel drive. And we'll long, it look a long bar, and it's actually hooked into the lower A-frame, and it's hooked into the frame, and that's the spring. It twists when those A-frames And it hooks to the transmission? Yeah, no, the trans they're in the way, and you oh, got to pull them out to get the transmission. They ain't hard to pull out of there. Oh, okay. But what he did was he put them back in there the wrong. He put them back in there wrong. Now, they're marked on the end. It'll tell you which way that they turn and what, you know, all. But you just make doggone sure that when you pull them out, you don't get them crossed up and put them back in there backwards like he did because the old suspension was all hard and the truck was riding yeah. like a Jersey wagon. We had to take them out and turn them around. It didn't hurt, hurt anything permanent, but we had to pull them out. But when you put them in there right, they go in real easy, you see. That's basically what it amounts to. But he was fighting with them. I actually wrote a motor rage article on that whenever he fought with that. But you would never think that they would be no different, but their front and back's got to be right and side to side's got to be right. you got to put them on the right side. You knew it when it was put it back together, did you? Huh? You knew it was messed up when it put it back together. Well, I knew the suspension was a heck of a lot harder than it was supposed to be. You know, and then when we put the other, uh, we put them back like they were, 
uh, Jimmy, the guy that owned the truck, said, hey, this thing you know, feels a little too bouncy in the front. I think there's something going on with them springs. Well, no, his shocks were wore out then, you know, so he, he was, anyway. Uh, but he's driving that truck right now, and you know, everything stayed together. Um, an impeller, a turbine, and a stator are components of what? Torque converter. Torque converter. We've been talking about that till we're blue in the face. Lock up clutch inside the torque converter that mechanically locks at the coupling point is a. That's the torque converter clutch. The stator actually unlocks at the coupling point. <laughs> the, the part in the middle, the one way clutch in the middle of the stator gives way at the coupling point. Uh, and everything's turning together. Which of the following are the three members of a planetary gear set? Uh, A's, spur cut gear, helical cut gear, and sun gear, is that right? No, no, sun no. gear, planetary gear, and ring gear. Sun gear, planetary, and ring gear. That's right. You can do cool stuff with those. Let me ask you this. If I hold the planet pinion carrier, in other words, your planetary gear set, <coughs> planetary gear set's got these, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to draw three of them. This carrier has got these little pinions that these are driving on. All right. The sun gear is driving the inside and the outside. Go there. If I hold this still and I drive that, what gear am I in? Uh, if I hold this, if I hold this planet pinion carrier still and I turn that sun gear, what gear am I in? Third. No. Now wait a minute. Think about what I'm saying. If I hold this, that means that these can't move. Right. All they're going to do is I just as done. And stay in one place. And I'm turning this. This is going to turn the opposite direction. Or reverse. Isn't it? Right? See, so think about that. This is pushing that that way, that's pushing that that way, that's pushing that that way, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, if you hold that, it's going to be in reverse. That's how that, which how that works with them things right there. Okay. Now, that was just a little, you didn't get charged, no extra first question. Planetary gear set damage and noise. Uh, huh? Did you get that uh, bolt that was looking for yesterday? Which one? That yes, I did. I've got it on my desk in here. Okay. Uh, planetary gear set damage and noise can be caused by what? Bearing failure within the torque converter, constantly locked clutch, lock up, shutter, or chuckle, chipped gear teeth, and lack of lubrication. D D. That's going to be a D, chipped gear teeth and lack of lubrication. That's a hard working gear set guy. I tell you who was a hard working son of a gun. Dagle stayed until he got to empower one and done on that Dodge van yesterday. We were talking 505 or something like that. He was here. Yeah, you'll kind of get used to that in a shop because at a shop you're going to be working from 7 to 5 or 30 minutes off for lunch. You know what I mean? No, that's a joke. Actually, what they usually, they got to give you an hour off in the middle of the day more or less. You know, they got to give you breaks and what they're equal an hour. So you'll have usually an hour off for lunch. But I used to work from 7 to 5.30. And, you know, mechanics work weeks nine hours a day, by the way. Everybody else works eight hours a day. Mechanic works nine hours a day. Even if you're getting straight time, you don't get any overtime until you work nine hours. That's the way a mechanics labor board, you know, did that. Last one, gear speed and torque output depend on the tooth count of the gears, the gear That's ratio, the direct drive, or A and B? A and B. It's going to be a dog in it, A and B. See, I missed one. Right. So, right. automatic transmission test two has come to an end. Anybody got any questions? Questions or comments? Ideas? Yeah. Criticisms? Everybody okay with that? Right. We trust your angle.